Oh, when one reads the Bible as 1 Samuel chapter 6 and realize what man is, sometimes comical. And the ark of the Lord was in the country of the Philistines seven months. And the Philistines called for the priests and diviners. Now this would be their priests. These would be the priests of Dagon. Let me see. Uh, we have uh, chapter five, verse. There was something there with the priests of Dagon. They don't, you know, they leap over the threshold. So they call them the heathen priests. This is not the Levites. This is not the Hebrews and diviners. You're not your fortune tellers. That's the magicians of Pharaoh and Exodus. And it's funny how you got priests and magicians together. And they are false priests. And magicians are false. And yet you see today magicians in connection with Christianity. It, it doesn't go together. Saying, what shall we do to the ark of the Lord? Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The Holy Spirit records that they are saying that that ark is Jehovah. Now we know the ark isn't. But we're talking about a bunch of people as a statue who now has no head and no bombs. Tell us wherewith we should send it to his place. We want to get rid of it. His place would be Israel. And they said, if you send away the ark of God of Israel, send it not empty. But in any wise return him a trespass offering. We've trespassed against the God of the Israelites. We've trespassed against the God of this ark. We got to make an offering. So we have to please God. Then he shall be healed. And we talk about God gave him death and hemorrhoids. And it shall be known to you why his hand is not removed from you. So death and hemorrhoids are present as we're reading this the plague is still active and still going we want to get rid of this god we want to get rid of this torture that's torturing us right now then they said what shall the trespass offering which we shall return to him god then answered five golden emeralds and I'll talk about that as we go along. But chapter 11, I'll really point it out as humorous. But five golden hemorrhoids. And five golden mice. We'll talk about that in a moment. According to the number of mice, uh, the number of the lords of the Philistines, for one plague was on you all and on your lords. All right, five is how many territories, how many counties, countries in the Philistines? How many leaders? There are five lords of the Philistines, five areas. So God has attacked all five areas. Though we read about Ashdod, we read about Ekron. There, uh, there are three other places in the Philistine area that God is attacking them all, as God attacked all Egypt except for Israel. Wherefore ye shall make images of your emeralds and images of the mice that marred your land. Now we're going to get those images. I'll get to verse 11 really points it out to make a comment. But that mice, that is the same thing that brought the black death, the black plague in the dark ages. It was the mice. And it was a plague of God because the church, the mother church had closed the Bible to all Europe and would not allow the Bible to the common people. God said, okay, fine. I'll just give you a bunch of mice with lice and fleas. And it practically wiped out all of Europe during the, the Black Plague, during the the dark age which they're trying to erase out of history right now 
They are now trying to say, as far as history, the Dark Ages never happened. Why? Because it goes against one church. It's in favor of Christians. Bringing the Bible out of the Dark Ages into what we have in our laps today. That's church history of Jesus Christ. That's Bible history, and they want to get rid of it. But the same thing that happened to Europe is happening now. It's fleas and lice of mice. And marred the land, death. Death. So I'm just trying to find one place where it did mention how many people were were killed well chapter 5 it does mention death and chapter 5 verse 12 and the men that died not smitten with the emeralds so there are people who died in emeralds the, 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 the hemorrhoids and there are people who died of this black plague by the mice so they say mice are the trouble so make five golden mice emeralds are the trouble make five golden emeralds you say well god doesn't appreciate that that's not under the law the philistines are not under the law they're trying to please god they're not jewish they're not under the law they don't know any better so they're doing the best they can he shall give glory unto the god capital g of israel Preventure, he will lighten his hand from off you. They are acknowledging that this is the God that's doing this to us. This is not the the missing head Dagon who's not happy right now because he can't pick up anything. He has no more hands. It's not Dagon doing this to us. It's the God of that ark. It's the God of the Hebrews. And we've got to make him happy. we got to appease him so we can get rid of this disease and death. That's what they're doing. He will lighten his hand from off you. And from off your gods. Oh, see, they kept the gods. That's the priest, verse 2. That's the diviners, verse 2. We sure can't get rid of the gods because then we would lose our job. And from off your land. Wherefore, then do ye harden your hearts. As the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts. When he had, when he God had wrought wonderfully among them, did they not let the people go and they departed? God's judgment. <coughs> you say, well, what does God's judgment have to do? What does capital punishment have to do? The Philistines say, you know what God did to the Egyptians? We don't want it to happen here. And you know what happened to the Egyptians? They they refused God. They they disobeyed God. They rebelled against God. And it got harder. And it got harder. And it got harder. And it got worse. And it was against this God. It was against that God. It was against those gods. And they said they finally let the Israelites go. We're not going to go through that. We are not going to do the Egyptian history. We're just going to bring this thing back to God. We're going to offer him a trespass offering. And hopefully he'll show us mercy and grace. We are not going to fight against this God of that ark. So God has a testimony, even in the heathen lands, don't mess with me. So, look at that history there. Now, removing history today, you're not going to get these stories. You're not going to get the repentance. You're not going to get Jesus Christ who was born in a manger. Why was he born in a manger? Because they're erasing all those. They are erasing, erasing the carols. There'll be a time in the age of the Lord tarries that no one will know anything about Jesus Christ just wickedness and sin now therefore make a new car let's not go buy a car let's not get it let's give this God a new car brand new and take two milk kind that's, that's female kinds who have young and are nursing their young on which there have come no yoke. They never plowed the fields. The only thing they've done, they give birth and they're nursing their birth. They've never done any physical labor. And tie the kind to the cart and bring their calves, that's their babies, home from them. That's the first time that cart shows up. 
And that's the first time calves show up. He said, well, what about Aaron? That was a calf. Now, isn't it amazing how calf, again, shows up with idolatry? You're talking about a bunch of idolaters, Dagon, the fish god, and G-O-D-S, and here's calves, again, mentioned. So, if you'd rather eat chicken and have an ambassador representation of your organization as a cow, uh, your Christian ethics, I'd say you haven't read your Bible. Because the same thing that is your idol, your image, your icon, is the same thing that Aaron did, and God was not happy with it. Moses was not happy with it. So... All right, so what they're going to do, here's these mother cows. I think it's the simplest way I can put it. They're mother cows. They are nursing their young. They care about their young. And what they're going to do is they're going to take those, cow those cows, they're going to tie them to the cart, they're going to take their babies, and they're going to put them in a barn uh, somewhere. Now, the intuition of those cows is to go find their babies and take care of their babies. Where are their children? And I'm just trying to break it down simple. So they're going to uh, bring the calves home from them. They're going to separate them and take the ark of the Lord and lay it upon the cart and put the jewels of gold. That's interesting. Jewels. Those jewels are the image of the hemorrhoids, the emeralds, and those jewels are the image of the mice. They're taking those golden emeralds, those golden mice, and they are jewels of gold, which he returned him for a trespass offering in a coffer. That's the first time that word shows up. By the sides thereof. And that's, that's important, the sides. Not on it, not in it. Lay it right beside. And it's kind of interesting because when you look at the close of Deuteronomy, Moses took the book of the law and it said they put it on the side of the ark. It's interesting. And send it away that it may go. And see, be a witness. If it goes up by the way of his own coast to Beth Shemesh. Now, Beth Shemesh is an interesting word because it means the house of Shem. Beth, house, Shem. Do we know a Shem in the Bible? Noah's son. That is the line of Jesus Christ. So then what they're saying is, okay, Take the calves away, bring them home. Put the kind, the cows, on that ark, tie them. And we're going to see if God directs those cows where they go. Do they go back home to find their calves? What are they going to do? Are they going to go to Beth Shemesh? Then he that done us this great evil, the emeralds and death and the mice, <clears throat> but if not, if those cattle do not go to Beth Shemesh, then we shall know that it was not his hand, God's hand, that smote us. It was a chance that happened to it. If, now, now look, they're, they're, they're trying God out here. And they're saying, God, if this plague of the emeralds and death is you, you take your ark by your animals, no evolution. And we've heard that an animal has talked to a prophet and has talked to a prophet. We've heard about that. I'm trying to think of the story of uh, the prophet, the lion prophet, and the, the lion. Uh, I don't know if that happened yet. But we have heard that you control the animal. And we want you, if this is you, God, you direct those animals home. Now, those animals can go a billion to trillion places they can go. And they have named one place, Beth Shemesh. 
And if it doesn't happen, it, it it's coincidental. And the men did so and took two milk kine and tied them to the cart and shut up the calf, their calves at home. And they laid the ark of the Lord on the cart and the coffer with the mice of gold and the images of their emeralds. Now here, this is funny. Read what it says. The images. An image is a picture. And you, if you were to bring it up to modern day today, you would think about somebody who's going in for a colonoscopy, goes to work and say, you see the pictures in my... Somebody laid out in gold and engraved, encrafted into those jewels what the hemorrhoids look like, and that's what they did. Five of them. Read the city. So when you pick up those golds, well, what is that? Ew. Well, that one's a mouse, a mice. They had big ears. <laughs> Mice have no good condensation in the Bible, no matter if you're in Florida or California. They're an unclean animal. They had just caused destruction in the Philistine. And later on in, in the future history, it's, to us it's history, that caused great destruction in Europe. And Christians spend millions of dollars to go worship a big fat rat. It's too big. It's almost like verse 11, it would be almost like an x-ray. Here's a picture of our hemorrhoids. Now, isn't that gross? And the kind took the straight way to the way of Bethlehem. Now, I don't know if it traveled the, 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 the road that leads to it, or they just bypassed the road and went straight, you know, through the fields off the beaten path but they went to Beth Shemesh so God guided those cows he says the Philistines are looking for answers and I don't know if he whispers into the ears of these cows, whatever he does he says you guys you see that place over there you go right over there that's the answer to Philistines which does show God will give answers to people that are seeking him even though they are outside the will of God those goes exactly where the where the, the Philistines say Lord if this is you that way and they went the way of Bessemus and went along the highway lowing that's mooing the sound they went as they went why are they mooing they're missing their, their young and turn not aside to the right hand or to the left hand. So I would assume they're on that highway, and that highway went another way. They stayed straight. And the lords of the Philistines went after them onto the border of Beth Shemesh. So they're, they're following. They're seeing what's going on. And they of Beth Shemesh were reaping. Now reaping their wheat harvest this is spring may this is the summer seven the feast of weeks pentecost in the jewish calendar ruth was doing the barley harvest and boaz story said you wait you stay here and later you can do the wheat harvest Chapter 2 of the book of Ruth, 2.13. Now let's look at Exodus 34.22. This gives a date. Exodus 34.22. And it's in line with Jesus Christ. It's in line with the church in Acts chapter 2. In Exodus 34.22... And I don't fully, and I want to, I'm looking into all these feasts and harvests. But in Acts 34, 22, And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks. That's Pentecost. 
of the first fruits of wheat harvest. That's where we are right now. They are in the middle of the wheat harvest. They are in the middle of Pentecost. Pentecost is when the church sets out its first meeting after the death, burial, resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ, where Peter opens up that first key to the Jewish people. And as Peter opens up that, that key to the Jewish people to receive Christ, here in this ark that's been away for six months, Seven months, excuse me. Now, from the time of the Passover to, uh, uh, I can't even, I just, just said it, uh, as, uh, Pentecost, 40 days. Seven months that ark has been gone, the centralness of Israel, though it's not God. And the day that it shows up, it's showing up right around Pentecost. And Pentecost is when the disciples get together after Jesus is ascended to heaven, because that's very important. Now, get ascended to heaven, because we're going to look at that in a moment, a possibility. It's the wheat harvest in the valley. And they lifted up their eyes and saw the ark and rejoiced to see it. Again, that, that Bet Shemesh means house of Shem. And the cart came into the field of Jehovah saves. That's the meaning of Joshua. Come on, how many fields were there? And it shows up at Jehovah saves on Pentecost. And what does Peter say on Pentecost in Acts chapter 2? Repent and be baptized, but you know, to believe on Jesus Christ. He saves. Of Bethlehemite. Of Shem. Not Japheth. Not Ham. And stood there. So this thing has been walking from Philistine. These two calves walking together, mooing missing their young and they walk right into Israel they've never been there before they're, they're Philistine cattle they walk right up to Beth Shemesh where the Philistine said hey this is where we're gonna go okay God got them to that part the Philistine well okay Beth Shemesh that's the answer to our prayer all right what about the Jew we're gonna send you to of all the people in Israel at this time it says BC 1140 of all the names that could be in Israel, God sends that ark to Joshua's field. What's Joshua? Jesus saves. Jehovah saves. Isn't that remarkable? I bet you might and stood there. <laughs> Here it is. And it stopped. That's it. Where there was a great stone. Now Christ is our rock. And they claimed the wood of the cart. They took the cart apart, broken in pieces, and offered the kind a burnt offering to the Lord. So they offered everything except for the ark, an altar at that rock for God, in celebration that the ark has come home. And the Levites, here comes a real priest. Here they come, took down the Ark of the Lord. Now, they're only ones that the Jewish people can touch. You say the Philistines, they're not Jewish. And they were doing it and say, God, we want this thing to go back. <laughs> now, we're going to look at us in a minute. He's going to touch that Ark and boom, he's dead. But he's Jewish. He ought to know what the law says. The Philistines don't. David's going to make a mistake. He's going to put that Ark on a cart. And us is going to die. The Philistines give it a card. Because they don't know what the law is. The Jews do. So the Levites took down the Ark of the Lord. And the coffer that was in it. Wherein the jewels of gold were. Wait a minute, let's run back to verse 8. Take the Ark of the Lord. And lay it upon the card. And put the jewels of gold. 
which he returned him for a trespass offering in the coffer by the side there by the side thereof. Now, I did not look at this up. Oh, it's got to be Deuteronomy, the last chapter. It says Moses puts it on the side of the ark, and I'm not going to find that. Give me a minute to see if I can. It says he finished writing. Uh, took the words. Words. I got. The, I got mine marked. Words. I didn't. I was going to, and I forgot. Toward the end of. Let's see if I can look There's at a that was in it. On the side thereof, but um, let me look up here real quick. I apologize. You were on me. Thirty-one twenty-six. Thirty-one twenty-six. Yep, that's what it is. Thirty-one twenty-six. You're on me, 3126. Now this is quite interesting because it says, take this book of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He hands the book over. It's finished. It's written. And put it, put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God. Put it in the side. Now over here in Samuel, for a trespassing in a coffer by the side thereof. And over here they took down the ark and the coffer that was in it. Wherein the jewels of gold were, and put them on a great stone. And the men of Bethlehem offered burnt offerings and sacrifices the same day unto the Lord. Now we're going to get in verse 19 more about this. But there's something about this ark now. According to what Moses did with the law, according to what goes on here, it looks like that, that coffer is put in the ark. On the side. And when the five lords of the Philistines had seen it, they returned to Ekron that day. Like Ophrah. In the book of Ruth. They did not serve God like Ruth did. They did not honor God like Ruth did. And they go back to their gods. They go back to their priests. God gave them light. God showed them, hey, best for mission, that's what you said. You don't want to believe it. You don't want to do right. Okay, that's it. No more light for you guys. That moment right there, they should have believed God. You realize that? They should have walked up to those men in Beth and say, hey, your God is God. What do I do to get right with it? But they don't. They go away like Ophrah. And these are the golden emeralds, which the Philistines return for a trespass offering unto the Lord. All right, here we go. For Ashdod one, for Gaza one, for Ascalon one, for Gath one, for Ekron one. That's the territory of the Philistines, the five of them. The golden mice, according to the number of all the cities of the Philistines, which were just mentioned, belonging to the five lords, there's, there's a lord for each city, both of fenced cities and of country villages, even unto the great stone of Abel, whereon they set down the ark of the Lord. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's hold on here. It says that that came to oh, where stone oh, bad. verse number 14 and the cart came to the field of Joshua Bethlehem and stood there where there was a great stone verse 18 even unto the great stone of Abel that's interesting wherein they set down the ark of the Lord, which atone, I mean, which, which stone remains unto this day in the field of Joshua, 
of the Beth Shemesh. Abel. You know about Abel? You know who he was? The shepherd that brought his flock, brought his blood, brought it in the place called Joshua, the house of Shem. What was, uh, according to the Bible, what was the written down name of the third son of Adam? Isn't that interesting? And he smote the, the men of Beshemish because they had looked into the ark of God, not on into the ark of the Lord. There's a problem. What was on that ark that covered that ark? The mercy seat. The cherubim in the sea. If you can look into that ark, and if the Philistines can put a coffer with golden mice and golden emerald in that ark, and Ichabod, the glory has departed, the, the ark of God is there, but the mercy seat is gone. God removed the mercy seat. You think it's possible? 2 Samuel 6.6 6. Two places. 2 Samuel 6.6 6. Now God smote them for looking in. 2 Samuel 6.6 6. It is recorded, this is Uzzah, when it came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God, took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error. That's the first time error shows up. And there he died. But Uzzah is killed by touching the ark. These people look into the ark. They're not even touching. They are capable of looking in. So what's in there? The coffer is removed. This is what happens. They take the coffer down. And they're going to offer it. There, and everybody's like, what's in there? Anything else? 2 Kings 25.8 now this one's a must. Second Kings 25 eight, and that's what it looks like. It looks like that that mercy seat is gone. Second Kings 25 eight. The Bible. Well, the Bible doesn't say. All right. Second Kings 25 eight. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuchadnezzar Aden captain of the guard and the servant of the king of Babylon unto Jerusalem. And he burnt the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem and every great man's house burnt he was well. This is the ransack, the destruction of Jerusalem. And all the army of Chaldeans that were with the captain of the guard break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. This is where Nehemiah sees it's destroyed. Ezra, it's destroyed. Now the rest of the people that were left in the city and the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babylon, with the remnant and multitude, did Nebuchadnezzar, or Dazar, the captain of the guard, carried away. But the captain of the guard left the poor of the land to be vine dressers and husbandmen. All right, here we go. The pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases, the brazen sea, that's where they washed, that was in the house of the Lord, did the Chaldees break in pieces and carry the brass of them to Babylon. And the pots, you know what pots are, right? You know what shovels, that's for the ashes and the snuffers. That was the stuff you put the candles, stuff. that's a little thing, isn't it? Snuffer and spoons, aren't spoons little things? And all the vessels of brass wherein they ministered took they away. Brass, brass. And the fire pan and the bowl, Tupperware, golden Tupperware, silver Tupperware. And the such things that were gold and gold, and silver to silver, the captain of the guard took away. And two pillars, one sea, and the bases which Solomon had made for the house of the Lord, the base, the brass of all these vessels, 
was where it was out measured. It couldn't weigh it too much. The height of one pillar was 18 cubits. Really? You, it's 18 cubits. The chapter upon it was brass. The top of this this column is brass. And the height of the chapter was three cubits. Wow, three cubits. And the wreathing work and the pomegranates upon the chapter round about. Well, this is what it looked like. All brass. And like unto these had the second pillar with wreathing work. And Solomon named them Boaz. And the captain of the guard took Sarai, the chief priest, high priest, and Zephaniah, the second priest, and the three keepers of the door. The people that kept the doors of the temple and the, the secondary priest and the high priest. He took. And out of the city he took an officer that was set over the men of war. That's your military captain. Five men of them that were the king's present. King's officials. Which were found in the city. And the principal scribe of the host. The men that wrote the stuff down. Which mustered the people of the land. Uh, Pole. Counting how many heads, three score men of the people, 60 people of the land that were found in the city. Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, took these and brought them to the king of Babylon, to Ribna. And the king of Babylon smote them and slew them at Ribna in the, hand, in the land of Hamath. So Judah was carried away out of the land. Where is the Ark of the Covenant? That Indiana Jones is trying to find. This is another one I'm supposed to look up and I didn't. So let me look this up real quick here. Let me come over to. Let's go to Revelation 11 19. Revelation 11 19. Corinth first great. Eleven nineteen. I'm important. Ooh, I'm in the wrong place. Eleven nineteen. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. This is in heaven. And there was seen in his temple. The Ark of His Testimony. Now, when we read in Kings, Second Kings, when we read all the things, the chapters that were taken, and what was missing in Second Kings twenty-five was the Ark of God. God raptured or took home the Ark of God that the Nazis did not take. God took it. And I am saying it looks like in 1 Samuel chapter 6, the glory has departed. It looks like that God took the mercy seat and left the ark that these men could go, what's in there? You're dead. They could not remove the mercy seat because Uzzah just touched it because the ark shook in good intention that God said it was an error. He had good intentions, but no one's touched that ark. He just touched it. There's no way these people could remove that ark. Even the Levites, they were not, they were to carry the ark like they did. They weren't supposed to remove that mercy seat. How are they able to take that coffer out of that ark? The mercy seat's gone. It has to be. And then when Jerusalem is sacked and Jerusalem is destroyed, the Ark of the Covenant is taken up to heaven. So when you've got Ezra and Nehemiah rebuilding Jerusalem and the temple's built, there is no Ark. It's in heaven. According to the scriptures. After 2 Kings chapter 25, you don't read anything of that Ark anymore until you get the Revelation. I won't write that down here. If you don't read about that art as being anywhere but in heaven. Now Hollywood may think that Adolf Hitler got a hold of it. He didn't get a hold of it. Why would Adolf Hitler want it? It's Jewish. 
1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 18 again. And the golden mice, according to the number of all the cities of Philistines, belonging to the five lords, both the fenced cities and the country villages, even unto the great stone of Abel, that's an interesting name, Joshua, Abel, wherein they set down the ark of the Lord, which stone remains unto this day in the field of Joshua, Bethshemus, at the writing of 1 Samuel, it's still there. And he, God, smote the men of Bethshemus because they had looked into, look at that word, into, the ark of the Lord, even he smote of the people, 50,000, three score and ten men. That's a lot of people. Why are there so many people there? It's harvest. It's a harvest time. And the people lamented. David lamented over because the Lord has smitten many of the people with a great slaughter. And the men of Beth Shemesh said, Who is able to stand before the Holy Lord God? And to whom shall he go up from us? And they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kirch of Jerem, saying, The Philistines have brought again the ark of the Lord. Come ye down and fetch it up to you. The Philistines said, You know what? People are dying. People are getting plagued. Get rid of the thing. The people in Beth Shemesh, people are dying. People are being plagued. Get rid of this thing. It's got to be in the right hands. So when you make a Hollywood movie that all these Gentiles and Nazis have got, they, they would have been wiped out if they actually had the ark. According to the Bible. But we know Hollywood doesn't do anything by the Bible. 